regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Cottonwood, Arizona to be held March 7, 2017. Deputy Clerk, please take the roll. Councilmember Althaus. Here. Councilmember Norman. Here. Councilmember Pfeiffer. Here. Councilmember Allen. Here. Councilmember Henry. Here. Vice Mayor Howard. Here. Mayor Linsky. Here. Please stand and join me in the pledge. Thank you. Next item is brief summary of current events by mayor, city council, and or city manager. The public body does not propose, discuss, deliberate, or take legal action on any matter brought up during the summary <coughs> unless the specific matter is properly <coughs> noticed for legal action. Does the council have anything to share? Um, real quick. Sure. Um, council member uh, Henry and I attended the very Vivi Rio Verde Valley Regional Economic Organization for the engage partner to engage partnerships in the Verde Valley. That's what I got out of it. Um, you can go ahead and let everybody know what you got out of it. It's a great meeting. A lot of people at the table. It was it was very cool. And the Verde Valley Emergency Preparedness Fair was an enormous success. Thank you to everybody who participated and came and played and learned something new. And hopefully that's gonna be something we can do every year, every other year. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Good. Any other council members? No. I do. Council member Althaus? So I um, served dinner at the American Legion Post 25 um, on Friday, February 24th, serving veterans. Um, bike night is this Friday night, March 10th, at Colts next door, right here next door at Colts. We've moved um, starting at 5 p.m. If anybody can make it out, you don't have to ride. Um, Welcome Home Vietnam Vets, as Kyla mentioned last uh, meeting, is April 1st. They are looking for volunteers. So um, I'd like to encourage city council, if you can, it's a Saturday, to volunteer. You can let Kyler or myself know and we can let the committee know, but they're looking for people to help hand out the pins for the vets, serve the food line. Um, Doug, you might have, Mr. Portosh might have more things. Uh, I had to run out of the meeting today. Yeah, I think those are the two main, main. areas of, of volunteers, but um, there's also um, you know, like you said, the food, uh, handing out the food, you know, just helping with set up, break down, those kind of things. Right, set, yeah, set up and break down, not two, uh, two other big things. Some of us that will be riding in the um, Welcome Home Parade uh, won't be able to help with, with set up because we'll be in the, in the motorcycle parade. So um, if you can help, you can, like I said, let Kyla or myself or, or Mr. Bartosz know and we'll get that information. I encourage the public as well if, if, you, can, if you can help. It's a, it's a big honor to be a part of, of this, to welcome home our Vietnam vets. And then finally, and I'll bring this up again, um, but Thursday, April 13th, um, Annie's is holding a spaghetti dinner. All proceeds will be benefit benefiting the Verde Valley Military Service Park, so they're donating the food and their time, kind of like um, Brandy's did a couple years ago for um, Sergeant Maynard when we built his home. So. So again, um, Thursday, April 13th, Verde Valley Military Service Park spaghetti dinner at Annie's from 4 to 7 p.m. <laughs> so good. I ask you all to please mark your calendars. That's all I have, thanks. Thank you. Any other council members? No? City manager, have you got anything to report? Just a couple things. Um, in case you needed a, an extra in incentive to get over and uh, visit the recreation center, this last Sunday we changed out all the cardio equipment uh, with new equipment and um, so uh, we will have hopefully less uh, out of order signs over there. Um, the police department is working with Cable One to do some public service announcements uh, for Cottonwood Cares which is a um, charitable program to help the homeless and, and uh, so those will be uh, broadcast on local cable channels. And then um, this week, uh, we'll finally be opening our uh, new restrooms, uh, the one at Garrison Park, the one at the Kids Park, and the remodeled restroom at um, um, the softball fields. And we've had a little bit of problem with vandalism, so 
I'd certainly ask the public to help us. Um, you know, if they see anything, to make sure to call and report it so we can look into it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of unfortunate to build something so nice and put a lot of the public's money into it, only to have it destroyed by probably young people that are out there uh, with not a lot to do. So that's okay. it, Mr. Mayor. All right. Very good. We uh, moving on to presentations. We have uh, an update from Yavapai College, uh, Dr. Ron Liss, uh, Vice President for Instruction and Student Development. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name in the beginning. So, if I'll, I'll introduce her. To okay, very Dr. good. Dr. Connie Harris, who is our newest board member. And if you look on what I just handed out, she's in the center pictures on the right. Uh, she has started in January, in January with the board, but and she represents District Three, which includes Dr. Liss. Very so, good. Uh, here to uh, answer questions if we have them at the end of the meeting. Uh, my moral support, I think, is the next thing. Uh, more support, I think. Very good. Well, thanks for being here today. We appreciate your time. Well, thank you. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to uh, me for a few minutes with this, but I also want to make sure it's interactive. So if you have questions about the college, uh, you know, I'm here to answer those as well. But we're pretty excited about a lot of things that are going on. But I just quickly go through what I gave you. So I know that I noticed a number of your pages here but it's kind of wrapped together in several brochures. The top one, it says spring 2017 update is the most current information that we have. And then we always do, um, and this is brand new off the press this, this week, is our uh, uh, kind of report on the 2016. So this is what we've done in the last year. This is what's really current um, going on. And then you do have in here the, the strategic, uh, really what our strategic uh, goals and activities are. So. That's, those will take a look for you to take uh, take with you. And some of you have one other piece there. I somehow ran short on one of them, and I don't have the last brochure, but it's, it's a smaller one about this big in the middle of it. Yeah, that's the one that says life explore land. And, and a lot of those have data and some figures about what the college does as a whole. And of course, here in Cottonwood, you want to know, well, what has it done for us? And, wh and where are we with it? But I like to talk about, um, you know, kind of the regional pieces and what we've done and what we're doing around uh, now. I just heard a report back today, for instance, in the Sedona area, and I know it's not in Cottonwood, <coughs> but it's not too far to travel. We're renovating our space up there quite significantly, and we'll be starting a culinary program there in the fall, along with the hospitality. We're continuing um, our OSHA or lifelong learning activities there as well, so I think that that's great. Um, what what kind of has passed the spring because it happened last summer, if you go onto our Clarkdale campus, you'll find the pavilion out there is renovated quite extensively with a nice floor on it. And so if you come to our graduation in the spring, which I invite you to in May, um, you'll, you'll have a nice, uh, nicer surface to sit on. And especially for the women in heels, they don't have to uh, bury their heels in the uh, chips of whatever it was on there and, and, and destroy them. Uh, so, so that's there. Uh, so, so we are doing quite a bit of, of uh, construction work. Um, you know, there is some traveling to get to it, but our Prescott uh, Valley Center, which again is uh, a hop, skip, and a jump, and a couple more hops and a skip, and you get there. And we're moving our allied health programs there, so it'll be a little bit closer than going all the way into our Prescott campus. And we're pretty excited. Uh, the Mountain Institute, JTED, is moving their programs into the building with us, uh, which leads me to the I don't know what you call it here. I hear it both ways, either VACT or VIAC. Which do, do you? I say VIAC, but everybody says it differently. You, you choose it one way or the other. I don't know. It's a VIAC. So uh, our partnerships with VIAC have been going strong, and uh, in, in, in building in a lot of positive ways. And we're looking, at, uh, in particular, of working with them as soon as this fall and putting some allied health programs uh, together so that they can be the. the uh, it's actually not dual, it's the JTED programs running college coursework so the students would get uh, college uh, courses or college credit as they're taking their high school credits, but using actually uh, college faculty to deliver the courses and we'll be doing it. We're not sure exactly what yet because we're trying to work it all out, but it looks like medical assisting is a possibility, probably not this year, but next year. The phlebotomy, I, I think we will have off the ground and running for this um, coming fall semester. That's what, what I've heard uh, again this week. So that's that's pretty recent things. We're pretty excited about one of the things we're doing. I'm working a lot with the high schools in bringing uh, programs that match up the high school to the college in a variety of ways. 
One of the programs we're really excited about, and we've run it, we're now going to be running it for the third time this summer, which is our LEAD program, which works with students in the high school uh, after they've graduated and before they go on to whatever they're doing in their lives. We try and attract some students that, that, know, that they know that they're not college material. They come to us and every one of them says, I'm not college material, I can't do it. And those are the ones we're after because they are. You know, we, we know that about our kids. They're, they're college material whether they know it or not. So we get them in the summer and we offer them two college level courses. It's free. Um, so, so they get that and the really neat part of it is watching them at the end because at the end of the summer they're like, well, how do I sign up for all my courses? And they come in and, and, and uh, uh, in this past summer it was all Verde Valley that was the only place we didn't run it in Prescott. We didn't get the enrollment there which is kind of backwards than normal. Usually we get plenty of enrollment in Prescott, but this time it was Verde, which we were happy to see. And uh, we encourage you to talk that up in the community. I've talked it up with the superintendents, uh, and, and we'll continue to do that because it's, it's very important. We only will take in 15 students, so it's not a huge group, but it allows them to really um, get in, invested. And, and we're looking at it that we, we had it on a, um, a two-year pilot program that ended last year. So we weren't, well actually it's a three year, it was going to run this summer and then we were going to stop it. And it's been so successful that we've now incorporated it into our budget and we'll be running that continuously now mm -hmm. from, from this point on because it, it works for the students. It turns them from non-college going to college going and then being successful. Um, I was at a scholarship luncheon on Saturday and one of the speakers w uh, was talking about how sh where she got to and what she was doing and what her plans were. And, and, and if I remember right, she was going to end up being a doctor. That's her goal. And she had, was just graduating from the college. She'll graduate this May. And it just had tears running down my eyes listening to the story and what the change it made from what she thought she could do to what she was able to do. So I'm real excited about that. So, um, and again, we will be having 15 slots. And what's interesting is in Prescott, we run it as a, um, uh, we use our residence halls. And we have, each summer, have had people from the Verde come over to Prescott, live there for the summer, and participate on a college campus, and, and that's been positive, too. And, and the good thing is they come back to Verde. They don't stay over in Prescott. So. <laughs> Which is what we really, what, what my emphasis all the time is, what can we do in each community to make sure that we're helping uh, those students move forward in a positive way, get a great education, and be ready to stay in the community and contribute to it? Because if we're uh, training people to leave, um, it, it really isn't, we don't have the right program. So that's one of the things that I really like to talk about. What are the right things for you to have here so to keep your um, kids here? So, so I think that's a critical point of, of what we do in our programs. So um, I talked about the two uh, major uh, building programs we're doing at Verde. The other thing we're doing is we just delayed a renovation on the Verde campus, waiting for uh, VACT to come together with some other things and it was actually taking a building and renovating it to be a career and tech building. And rather than us go and build the career and tech building, thinking what needs to be here, we need the Verde to come together and say, this is the right career and tech um, things for here. And then when we renovate the building, we'll have a building that's usable for the community. And, and that's what, what I'm all about, is, is making sure that happens. So, Which building is this, Dr. Lewis? It's, it's building L. Okay which right now has our allied health programs, our nursing programs mm -hmm. in there and all, but th it doesn't necessarily have to stay there. You sure. know, we can move those around campus. We actually have some, quite a bit of flexible space on the campus to move things around, but we want to make sure when we renovate, we do the right thing. So that's really two years out now uh, because we, we need a, a year to plan, but we need kind of the community and VIACT in particular to come together in the next year so then we can start planning based on, on where they're growing. It's not that we can't do anything until then, but we didn't want to start building a building that may not uh, fit the purposes of, of the community. So that won't help VIACT then for this year because they just hired their, or they're hiring their construction it tag? Would, it would not help them uh, because we won't have a physical, well, it doesn't help them with new programs. We do have the allied health program, so we'd probably use that mm -hmm. facility if that's what they want. We don't even know for sure where we would be offering the programs okay. that we would offer this year. Okay. Whether it's on a different site, whether it's in, even in one of the high schools would be a possibility, so, okay. so we don't know. Okay. So uh, again, another piece that we really, with our partnership with high schools that we're working on, and it talks about it on the front page of this, 
on the, about the middle of the page, about where my thumb is, that we're really undergoing a, a big push for pathways. And pathways is really working from, and I look at it coming from the high school to the master's program or beyond. But how do we make sure that students get the uh, uh, cleanest path, that they know what they're doing, if they're part-time, full-time, half-time, whatever they're doing, that they understand what it takes to move through efficiently through the program so they're not wasting time along the way. But also, once they're on a pathway, we then can build services around them to support them. And we keep an eye by building the pathway and knowing what they're on. If they start to veer off of that and start doing some things that are not well, we're going to have a tracking system in place so we can grab them early enough to make sure, are you doing what you do mean to be doing what you're doing? Because sometimes people will change their paths and that's okay. But if they don't mean to, but they're doing it unintentionally, we want to have services around them to, to make sure they stay on path. So it's pick the path, make sure you're on it, provide the support services around it that we can make sure that they're successful because that's what it's all about. It's really moving from the historical uh, higher education was get them in the door and we would get paid for getting students in the door and you know and, and, uh, and, and eventually they complete but they hung around for 15 years so we're still collecting um, tuition and all the other pieces so what the heck right well that's not where we are anymore uh, we're trying to be efficient we want to get them completing we want to get them completing with what they want and so we are really focusing on how do we get students in the door efficiently still we don't want to exclude anybody but once they get in there, how do we take a hold and make sure that they're moving forward, they're doing the things that are going to be best for them and helping them go through. So that's what Pathways is really all about, and we're focused quite extensively on that. One of the sayings I'm bringing in, and I, I brought it and then I kind of dropped it, and it'll be coming back. I'm calling it um, student success a name, not a number, because we, you know, everybody gets assigned a student number, and it depersonalizes in a lot of ways. So I want to repersonalize that and making sure we're taking care of each one of the students and the way that they need uh, the care and, and make sure that's done. And then, of course, we, we will be continuously reviewing <coughs> what we're doing. So if this isn't working, and we'll have tracking uh, identification that says, is this working? Are, we, uh, are our benchmarks moving in the way we want? And if not, we go back and redo the program or change, the, you know, tweak it, I would hope, rather than redo it and move it in ways that is going to efficiently get students through the program. So, I. I don't need to carry on with a lot more of this. I'd rather have questions if you have any for from the uh, council. Or council, any questions for Dr. Liss? Yeah. I'm curious if you'd tell me about this Pathways program a little bit more. Is this something you're offering over here too at the Clarkdale campus? It, it is actually, it's, Pathways isn't really a program by itself. Okay. It's a methodology of us running the college. Okay. So it really is, is offered across the college. Okay. So anywhere you go, there will be a pathway for every program we, okay. we have, and it will be everywhere. Okay. So, and, and that's critical to us. It's, it's in the other thing with Pathways that we're, I'm really emphasizing is not just the faculty in the classroom. It's not just the student advisors. It's any person that they run into on the campus, okay. their primary goal is to help a student complete successfully through a program. But you'll have all those support services in place at the Clarkville campus well, as well. We will be kicking it off in the fall. Okay. And will everything be in place? No. It will be an evolving process to get it all going. It's a, it's a huge undertaking and change for us. And I've been pushing real hard. And I've, I only got here in June. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of <laughs> brought that with me as saying, that, you know, they were getting kind of talking about it for a couple of years but weren't moving on it. And I said, right. we got to move. We got to get it in place. I want something in place by the fall. Right probably won't be 100% established for another year after that. But, okay. But we are looking to add support services uh, along the way. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's that's my focus on where I'm adding uh, yeah. adding dollars and in, in, in budget and resources mm -hmm. to that. Good. That part of that. It's certainly encouraging, at least for me to hear, that you're focusing a lot on, on career tech opportunities here. Um, I can't stress how important <coughs> that is to the Verde Valley. I met uh, yesterday with Chairwoman Winicky and the vice chair over at the Yavapai Apache Nation, and it's an issue they're wrangling with too, as a lot of communities are. And we we're screaming for uh, post-secondary career tech opportunities here. So anything you can do gotcha. to help in that front would really and, and it's appreciate tough. it. It's, you know, we have CTEC, which is a wonderful operation, and there's lots of things there. And what we hear is we'll just move something like it over here, mm -hmm. but it may not be the right thing. It's so that's where we're working. It's making sure what we bring in here isn't just the kind of a rubber stamp. Put it in there. We need to sure. know the, what the community is doing, and that's sure. going to take a little bit. Of well, I think I think you find there's a lot of support here to Great. to get a program like that established. Yeah, perfect. Thank so. you.
Any other questions from council? No. Well, thank you, Dr. Liss. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, there's a number to call in here. You're welcome to uh, contact me by name. I'm easy to find out at, at Yavapai Pi College, and I'm more than happy to come back or talk to individuals at any time about anything you need. You want to know about the college? Would you mind, sir, just leaving your cards on the table so the council can grab them after the meeting? Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next item on the agenda is call to the public. This portion of the agenda is set aside for the public to address the council regarding an item that is not listed on the agenda for discussion. However, the council cannot engage in discussion regarding any item that is not officially listed on the agenda for the discussion and or action, for discussion and or action. And comments are limited to a five minute time period. So if there's anybody in the public that would like to address the council, and sir, I know that you, you're on for the call to the public, so we'll call you up here in just a second, but there should be yellow forms in the back. If there's any, anyone else that would like to address the council. So uh, I'll go ahead and call up then uh, Eric Evan, please, principal of American Heritage Academy. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? City well. Council, thank you for having me here this evening. I do have some handouts, so if I could approach and, and pass those around. Sure. We can hand them, yeah. I know my, my time is short. I have a five minute window here, so I will be uh, as brief as I can. I have a PowerPoint here that we put together um, to help assist in what our concerns are. Um, again, my name is Mr. Evans, a principal at American Heritage Academy, uh, Cottonwood Campus. And I also have with me here this evening um, the CEO of Ed Key Incorporated, um, my boss, uh, Mark Plitzowite. Uh, Ed Key Incorporated um, manages uh, close to 20 public charter schools throughout the state of Arizona. Um, AHAs, both AHAs in the Verde Valley uh, being two of them. You said um, pu public charter? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Um, so on the first slide here, you can see that the title of, and the reason that I'm here, um, is Student and Pedestrian Safety near our campus, specifically East Cherry Street and Main Street in Cottonwood. Um, first, who are we? Who is American Heritage Academy? Uh, on page two, we are a 501c3 public charter school located at the dead end side, at the east side of uh, Cherry Street here in Cottonwood and we serve almost 300 students in grades K through 12. We do not provide transportation, so students must walk to and from school each day or get picked up. So there's a lot of car traffic on that dead end street four days a week, 10 months out of the year, um, uh, twice a day uh, at drop off between 7.15 and 8 o'clock in the morning. And again, it ratchets it up at 3 p.m. till about 3.45. And then we have a lot of pedestrian uh, students on traffic at all ages um, on foot who are navigating through that traffic um, heading on their way home to as far as uh, village or, um, uh, Verde Village out at the outskirts of town. So quite a significant walk for some of our students. The two main concerns that I have that I wanted to present to the City Council this evening um, at the bottom of page two are the crosswalks at Main and Cherry. And then uh, secondly, the lack of sidewalks, lack of basic painted roadway lines on East Cherry a lack of adequate shoulders on the road, and a lack of proper roadway drainage on East Cherry as well. All that water wants to run down Cherry and into our parking lot, around our building, into <coughs> our backfield, and eventually to that irrigation ditch that is behind our campus. The crosswalks at Main and Cherry Streets are five lanes of traffic to cross, two in each direction with a turning lane in the middle. It's a 35 mile per hour zone that is rarely obeyed. There's a lot of speeders through there, which is another safety concern. And there's heavy traffic in and out heading to Old Town. And you have lots of pedestrian traffic from our students, DES visitors to the Department of Economic Security who are disadvantaged individuals um, who are usually navigating and getting there on foot. Um, a city bus stop at the end of uh, Main and Cherry and then all the commercial businesses around the area. So lots of traffic. Uh, Morgan Scott and I agreed that although we can't quite put our finger on the why, that these two crosswalks are hard to see for vehicles. 
I went and looked again today and spent some time at the intersection, <coughs> and I noticed that it comes to a peak there, right at Main and Cherry, where both crosswalks are located. The other crosswalks, as you're heading towards Old Town, are on a downward hill, and they're very easily visible from a distance. So you can see the white lines across the road. Um, some potential options that, that we're hoping for, for uh, better safety of our pedestrians, brighter and more reflective crosswalk paint, uh, Mr. Scott indicated the possibility of pedestrian flashing beacons, perhaps a stop sign or a stop light, although that's quite the undertaking. Uh, crosswalk signs, uh, just as a note, are 10 yards and 30 yards away from the actual crosswalk. So it sneaks up on you as a car uh, right away. There's not enough notice there for the uh, two crosswalks. East Cherry Street itself, we believe that there is a lack of striped lines indicating lanes and shoulders of the road, adequate sidewalks or shoulders for pedestrians to use, a lack of proper drainage for floodwaters, which is eroding away at the road. You'll see pictures momentarily. Um, we believe there's a lack of student and pedestrian safety <coughs> on Cherry Street, and emergency access to a quality roadway. Um, there is a first responder that lives down the dirt road near our campus. They need access, 24-hour access to Cherry Street um, during emergencies here in the city. Um, and we believe there's a lack of safe speeds. It's a 25-mile-an-hour zone on dead-end Cherry Street. Potential problems as a result of uh, we're, we're, the lack of things that we see on Cherry Street. Cars not maintaining their lane. Cars swerving to avoid potholes and dips in the road, and students walking on private property and or in the road, and my worst fear, pedestrian versus vehicle accidents and or fatalities. I know my time is up. I heard the timer. <coughs> Pages four through seven, four through six, excuse me, um, are uh, titled for where they are being taken, and photos that I took to show you the crosswalks, show you the crosswalk signs, and more importantly, the, um, the potholes and the poor road quality of East Cherry Street. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Appreciate you coming in. As you know, we can't respond directly to, to this item because it's not listed on the agenda, but uh, we can direct staff to put it on the agenda. And I spoke with the city manager earlier today, I think, about um, we do have a list of, of priority sidewalks. We don't have much money that we put into it every year. I think about 30,000 is what the council allocates every year for its sidewalks, but um, it's a concern all across town. So what I'd like this council to do, because it's a new council, is take a look at that list again and see if we want to reprioritize any of the sidewalks. Um, can't promise you anything, but I, I can promise you that we'll put it on the agenda soon for discussion with this council. I know that I would certainly appreciate any priority that you could give to East Cherry Street and the intersection at Main Cherry. I understand. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, no other call. Uh, members of the public out there want to speak to us? We'll move on to approval of the minutes, special meeting and regular meeting of February 7. Okay, I, I have a few corrections, but I've talked to the city clerk about it, so okay. I would go ahead and approve the minutes with corrections as noted. They just typographical? Or? They're, they're, not, they're not content, they're courtesy and curtsy and okay. just simple, simple things okay. like that. Yeah, there was just some typos. I think I went over my notes with Ms. Allen, and I think she caught them all that okay. I caught, so. All right, and do I hear a motion? Second. She made the motion. Oh, you did make a motion. I already heard a motion. <laughs> Councilmember Allen and uh, Councilmember Pye for second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, minutes are approved. Okay, item eight is consent agenda. There are uh, just two items on the consent <coughs> agenda. Number one, renewal of contract with Patriot Disposal for Solid Waste Removal Services for the City of Cottonwood. Okay. Item two. Uh, special event liquor license application submitted by Susan Beach, applicant for Verde Valley Birding and Nature Festival, Sorry. a.k.a. Verde Valley Nature Organization, for an event scheduled for <coughs> April 27, 2017 at Dead Horse Ranch State Park, located at 675 Dead Horse Ranch Road. Any items any member of the public would like to have pulled? Members of the council? I would like to pull the first item. First item is renewal of contract with Patriot Disposal for Solid Waste Removal Services for the City of Cottonwood. Okay, we'll take that item separately then. Mr. Bartosz, would you like to introduce that item? Do we go ahead and pass the agenda? The court? Yeah. Oh, do you want to? Okay, yeah. excuse me. And so we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll go ahead and uh, take a motion then on the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent ag agenda with item number two, one being pulled. Second. 
Okay, so uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so then did you catch that, Mr. McLean? Who? Okay, sorry, I'm doing a poor job at keeping track of who's making the motions here. Um, <coughs> all right, item one, re uh, renewal of contract with Patriot Disposal for Solid Waste Removal Services for the City of Cottonwood. Okay, I just had one question. Do we have anybody here that's going to address that? Or? It doesn't look like anybody's here, but we can, we can try. <laughs> who's on first? Uh, is there something? If you would, just sir, just try to help. Please introduce yourself, Mr. Oh, Rodriguez. Rudy Rodriguez, I'm the admin services general manager. If I can't answer it, I'll have Jeff Cook also. Yeah, it's just a quick, easy question. I know, and it's been on the internet, it's been on Facebook, that Patriot Disposal no longer has a recycling service up. It's been down since November. They're not recycling. They're just, they're just dumping everything. I'm trying to find out, are they still not recycling? Is that, and is that what we contracted them with them for, is that they were doing our re recycling as well? I, I don't believe we're, I don't, I'm not sure if they're still, if they're up or not. Last time we were okay. there, they were still functioning. Do you know anything about that? Um, Jeff Cook, contract purchasing administrator. Um, this is for the waste removal, so not recycling. That was a little added bonus, and when they initially proposed, hey, we also recycle. Mm -hmm. But we do pay other companies in town for some recycling services. So at this point, this is just for solid waste. Okay. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, um, yes. Council Member Allen, I'll check on that and see where they're at. Thank you. Because uh, I talked to them shortly after the fire, and they said they were going to try and just get back up, mm -hmm. you know, and and use what they still had available to try and make it work. And they're pretty dedicated to recycling. Yeah. So, uh, my sense is, I, I mean, it's really it's part of their business plan. Everything they can keep out of the landfill, it's it's cheaper for them. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's their business model, so I'll check and let everybody know. Cool, okay. thank you. And then, are we able to possibly table this renewal without service interruption until we find that out? If we, um, you know, consider that as part of the the bid award in the contract uh, in the first place. I think that's what Jeff just explained that it really wasn't. It was a work. It, but that's still something that I would consider in the evaluation of most advantageous if there is some kind of a perk. Um, there. Yeah, I, I don't believe that we evaluated for recycling services as part of that agreement. It was for solid waste removal in the city, and that was kind of their own added note, which really wasn't taken into consideration in the evaluation. If that helps clarify. Thank you. So do they? So they don't provide any recycling services. This is just for Holland solid waste. Yes. That's what this contract is considering. So. Okay. That's what it says for citywide solid waste. Okay. Do you want a motion? Uh, yeah, I do. I'm just I'm just confused how recycling became it, part of this conversation. But and well, my concern is I'm not sure if Patriot is using separate streams or if they're using a single stream. They use a single stream. They use a single and stream. They don't dig it out of that. And then that. I mean, I don't, I'm not that up on their uh, solid waste versus the recycling, but if it's one truck, I would think that that would impact our contract. That, you know, that perk of the recycling in that single stream. Yeah, I believe this was brought up at the time we had the solicitation, and we clarified that it was, we were looking for waste removal, just like trash services, basically not any type of recycling. Mr. Mayor, council yes. members, we'd be happy to go ahead and table this and, and check into both of those. That's fine with me as long because as there's uh, no interruption I, I seem to recall that it was for recycling services, too, as well. You don't think so? Because this was, this was strictly, we've talked about recycling, but we've never combined a contract of recycling or or um, trash services. This mm -hmm. is basically just strictly trash services, <coughs> collection, and disposal. The single stream that, that Patriot has had in the past was, as our city manager mentioned, that's kind of like a perk that they have because it, it's, it, it behooves them to not put so much trash in 
But when we took the bid out, we didn't go to the contractors and say, this includes the recycling. It mm -hmm. was just strictly the pickup and the takeaway of our solid waste. Well, maybe if there's if there's no rush, then maybe let's just table this. We'll bring it back in two weeks and just have some more information in the packet for council to, to review then. And I'd like to look, too, because if we're able to secure a more advantageous bid with a provider that can offer both of this, you know, a combined bid, um, that might be something we can consider now at this renewal, you know, at this juncture. So you're asking us to go ahead and rebid the whole thing? No, not at all. But I would like to see what exactly was bid and then where are we at with our other contracts if we're able to secure a more advantageous bid by rebidding recycling and solid waste, this might be a good opportunity. I don't have enough information tonight to ask you to rebid. That's not at all what I'm asking. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be totally honest with you as most of the waste haulers, they can probably do some sort of cycling, but they they do it totally separate. I think uh, waste man, waste man, excuse me, Patriot Waste are the only one who actually has this uh, single stream method. Um, we can do it, but I think we probably need some parameters on, on what it is exactly that you want because we bid it one way, now you're asking us to look at, 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 at uh, recycling. Do you want us to bring all the bidders back to the table on this? I, I think what they're just asking some questions. They're not asking for us to rebid it at this point. Okay. Just so to let's see the just contract. get the information and we'll bring this back. Okay. So, All right. okay. Thank, you. thank you. All right. So I move to table uh, consent agenda item one. Second. So the mayor made the motion and Councilmember Allen seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. We'll table that then. <coughs> All right, moving on is uh, into new business. Item one, approval of a contract with Reese and Sons Tire, Inc. for vehicle maintenance and repair services for the city of Cottonwood. Mr. Cook. Mr. Mayor, Council, Jeff Cook, Contract and Purchasing Administrator. What we have before you this evening is an agreement for city fleet vehicle maintenance and repair services. I'm representing various city departments tonight asking for approval of the contract um, with Reese and Sons. The agreement, the, the previous agreement has expired as of March 1st. We're operating and continuing service under the same terms as that until this has been awarded. We published the solicitation in the newspaper in consecutive weeks, public purchase, the city website. I went out and reached out to all of the local shops in town that I knew of. In addition, we did a pre-bid meeting, um, <clears throat> and we only received three responses back. Um, as I mentioned, the evaluation committee consisted of staff members who utilize these services more than I in the city, public works, uh, utilities, PD, um, trying to think here four or five various departments in the city. Mm -hmm. And um, Reese and Sons received the highest cumulative score from committee members and was also unanimous, unanimously chosen as the most advantageous proposer by all scores. And so by awarding this contract, we uh, establish a new contract for a three-year term with two one-year renewal options, which will give us a fully executed agreement for these services that has just expired. Okay. So essentially it could, could be a contract uh, totaling five years? Right. Okay. And how many years has Recent Sons been performing? This five, five years. For five years now. Okay. Okay. Any, any questions from council on this? I'm curious, at your pre-bid meeting, how many did you have show up for the pre-bid meeting? We had one vendor show up to the pre-bid meeting, Recent Sons Tire. Okay. And <coughs> so I... I reached out multiple times to each of the shops because that's alarming to me. I, you know, I try to drum up as much competition as we can. Several mm -hmm. emails documented to the vendors, phone calls, and that was just all of the interest that we could get for this one. Okay. All right. Any other questions, Council Member? Uh, <coughs> just for information, we have a new business in town. She's sitting right back there. She was one of the bidders. Mm -hmm. You're 360, right? Yes. 
I just thought everybody ought to know that she's a new, a new citizen in town and she has her own garage and uh, she was one of the bidders. But I just thought since she's sitting here, we should acknowledge her. Thank you. And, and you did fill out a, a form, ma'am, to speak. So would you like to come up now and speak? Introduce yourself to council and let us hear what you have to say. Thank you. I'm Celine Carrot. I own 360 Automotive here in Cottonwood. Uh, June will officially be one year in business. Um, I'm going to start off telling you a little bit about me. I've been fixing cars over 10 years. I'm a member of ASA, IATN, S. Patty Advisory Panel, Mingus High School Automotive Advisory Board, uh, YCSO's Canine Search and Rescue Unit, member of the Chamber of Commerce, Local First Arizona, and the National Association of Women Business Owners. I'm also an ASC certified master tech in addition to having the L1 certification. <coughs> so tonight I want to address some inequities in how the criteria were administered in the request for proposal evaluation. The uh, first one was location. Um, my understanding was the shop closest to 816 South Main Street would receive the greatest points in this area. Uh, to get to the Reese's or Big O, you would have to drive past my shop. So I'm not understanding how the scores are the same on that one. Um, then you have the site references and the site visit evaluations. Uh, none of the references were contacted and there was no site visit to my shop. Uh, I do want to thank Mr. Cook for his honesty. He could have said that somebody drove by and it wasn't there or they tried to call references and nobody answered the phone. Um, but he was honest about them not doing that and that I do appreciate. Um, when I questioned the scoring via email, the response I got back, um, I did give everybody a copy of the email. I think you guys got that. Um, so I'm just gonna read the key points on it. Um, I reviewed the individual score sheets and three of our five evaluators did not score the site visit section. The other two were familiar with all of the scored this item. The main factor was the ability to secure vehicles in a lot area and the size of that area. References were taken at face value, although none of them were contacted, the staff felt they had enough information by looking at which companies were listed. Um, I was awarded 49 points on references, even though nobody was contacted, and Reese's got 70 points based on staff assumptions, which were not part of the evaluation as it was written in the request for a proposal. Um, kind of looks like those making the decisions uh, didn't feel they needed to fulfill their obligation in the evaluation process and do their due diligence. Uh, I was awarded 21 points on the site visit that never occurred, while my competitor was awarded 26 points. Um, as I stated, I've been in business less than a year, so I don't know how they could have made that decision without coming by the shop. Um, part of that was the ability to secure vehicles. Um, had they come by to visit, they would have seen that in addition to storing vehicles in the shop, I have access to a locked gated area, and I also have video surveillance that's Wi-Fi accessible. Um, so realistically, the competitor was awarded this contract based on criteria that were never evaluated in a process that's quite specific. Um, I do acknowledge that there may be mitigating factors, such as an ability of a single shop to repair everything. Theoretically, yeah, I can fix anything that comes in the door, um, but that approach isn't gonna be beneficial to anybody involved as the end result is not going to be efficient or cost effective. Uh, certain situations may call for a subcontractor that is more familiar or better equipped for the requir required. Um, I could have easily misled the evaluation committee, but that's not the type of shop I wish to have. I prefer to sh run a shop based on honesty and fairness, which is all I expect from the committee throughout the bidding process. I also found it interesting that except for the shop that was previously awarded the contract, not a single one of those shops participated last time, put in a bid this time. Uh, before submitting a bid, I spoke to a few of them who had bid before and was advised by all of them not to waste my time filling out the paperwork as it was gonna go back to Reese's anyway. Based on this experience, I understand now where these other business owners were coming from as it's very clear the decision was made without even going through the motions outlined in the RPF. Um, all three business owners submitted bids and went through the effort of putting it together the least they could do is evaluate the bids completely and fairly. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> Mr. Cook. Can you, can you answer a couple of questions for me? Yes. Um, 
the, no one from the committee called any of the references that were listed on the? That's correct. And I, I did write this email. Anything that I put in writing, I am aware, you know, of, that we work for a public entity. So I, mm -hmm. at the time that I wrote that, I felt that in the business of doing this, we call references, and most all of them give glowing remarks all the time, mm -hmm. which can result in a very similar score for all of the participants. So in this case, I looked at the references, and we looked at the size of the shops, as I had mentioned, the vehicles, the types of vehicles, and the length in the contracts. And then the site visit, no one did, did they? Uh, did anyone from the committee or the committee as a whole make site visits? I contacted um, after having this email and asked because I, when I received the scores, we had zeros in those sections, which is kind of rare for all proposers from three of our committee members. And they informed me they didn't have time to make it and do those site visits and asked if it was all right, if, had they done zeros for everyone making it fair in that regard. And I, at the time, responded, yeah. The other two claimed that they were familiar with the locations, they visited them, they did see the locked perimeter at Ms. Carruth's shop. Um, they had questions on whether it could house the number of vehicles we needed. Mm -hmm. They felt that they were pretty clean and she ran a really nice shop. I guess, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I am concerned that, I mean, that when I read through the professional services agreement, I, I thought it was very thorough and, and exhaustive, and I, I would hope that we'd follow through with, with everything here. I'd be, I'm surprised that no one would call the references or visit the, the shops from the committee. Um, I don't know if how the rest of the council feels about that, but it, if, if we say we're going to do it, then I would think we'd follow through with that. I, I agree with that. I, I understand the reason why not doing that, calling the references, because it does get repetitive. Everybody, you're not going to refer somebody that's going to give you a bad review. I understand that, but if that's part of the grading criteria, it really should be followed up on. I did a, I did a quick bit of math here, and even taking out references and site visit, um, Reese still comes out top with 232, 360 is 194, and Big O is 130. Um, I, I would, no matter how this comes out, encourage you to do whether or not we table this and we go further or we award it to recent sons. Don't let that discourage you. You're new in town. I remember seeing you at the first um, chamber mixer. Um, don't, don't let that discourage you. Continue. That's how people get in here. Reese hasn't been the top dog all the time. They've been kicked off the pedestal quite a few times, and somebody else has gotten in there and serviced the city for a while. So, so please keep us in mind. Okay, I just want, want you to know we need more people with your skills. In particular, a woman business owner just thrills me to no end with your skills. I just am very pleased to see that. I'd like to echo what Council Member Allen said. I'm, I'm happy that we have a contracts manager in place and encourage you in the future. I also appreciate the staff who serve on the selection committee as well. It does take cons you know, considerable time. My concern, um, echoing Mayor Linsky, though, is if we have these criteria, I understand the numbers and the scoring in this particular instance, but in order to, in my opinion, to have a meaningful procurement process, if we say these are the um, items that will be considered and there are only six, to not then meaningfully consider two of those six, basically a third, um, is problematic to me. Also, as far as location, and I didn't have you know time in advance of tonight's meeting um, to dig into procurement laws, but following so long as we follow procurement laws, I would really like to see as part of the most advantageous criteria, keeping any sales tax dollars in Cottonwood without obviously discriminating and walking that fine line, um, which I don't believe from reviewing the packet, um, we gave any consideration as far as location and sales tax dollars in our community. And correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that I've seen that in solicitations before in the bigger cities, so we can definitely look at that. An advantage, you mean, for local, uh, for businesses within the municipal limits? Yeah, and it, okay. it seems to 
the ones that I've seen seem to fall more on the lines of an IFP where it's a low bid situation or a request for quotes where it's hard dollar values and I think somehow they factor the, the tax. Did you say IF, IFP? IFP, invitation for bids, I'm sorry. Okay, thanks. <laughs> IFB, okay, thank you. And can I, can I just add one more thing? Um, I understand that that may have not been, uh, maybe I have too literal of a mind sometimes because I, I did take Ms. Carruth's information and took it to heart and read through it. Also seeing the numbers add up, had those, had it gone a different way in those two criteria and looked at the, the cost and the approach, which were weighted at 55% on this, um, I won't do that in the future. Uh, I can see that that has caused problems in this instance, but I, I guess I took it pretty literally when I looked at the numbers there, as you've stated, and there was no way to make those back up in those other criteria. Um, the, I'd like to inform Ms. Groth, the staff was very pleased with your proposal as well and very impressed. How, how does the rest of the council feel about this item? I, I you know, I did some math too and, and, ga and actually gave the points instead of the way Councilmember Allen did it, mm -hmm. just taking the few categories and still, um, Maurice was at 395 and 360 was at 356. So I think, you know, cost and approach, especially with the higher weight, you, you know, has to be taken into account. I'm fine moving forward. Okay. What What is approach? What does that mean? Their approach to the proposal, it's probably, um, I think I have it more well defined in here. Um, as it was listed in the proposal, description of approach to the city's need for a turnkey fleet vehicle maintenance solution. Turnaround time will be considered in this criterion and see the specifications and scope and work which are listed in the agreement. Okay. Under the cost criteria, did you factor in, you know, for example, the one business outside of city limits not having the sales tax, um, you know, in their uh, We did not. Rate? That was okay. not part of this solicitation. Um, I believe the hourly rate provided by recent sins was $65 an hour for labor. And uh, you can correct me. 85 or 95 dollars per hour for Ms. Grove. That can be pretty significant with the number of vehicles we have, that 20. Sure, but we don't then evaluate the amount of time that we're taking. So, you know, I'm an attorney and I think, you know, hourly billers will agree. You can hire an attorney who is $500 an hour who will take one hour to perform a task versus an attorney who may be a bargain rate attorney at $185 an hour, who will then take six, you know, a significant amount of time. So I don't, I, I understand completely. I, my biggest concern again is if the procurement process is fairly and uniformly followed and somebody is the winner and somebody's the loser, that's fair. But here we're, and especially in light of the public perception, if it's true that People should not waste their time, quote unquote, going through the uh, bid process with the city. Um, that's very concerning to me and where we do have a third of the criteria that weren't um, meaningfully considered. Uh, I, you know, I still have, have concerns about this, uh, this award. And, and I would agree. I think um, it may not change the numbers had they followed through with the site visit and calling the references. Um, but again, if we're going to say that that's part of the evaluation process, then we really should follow through with that. Mr. Mayor, council members, um, <coughs> one of your options also is, is to refuse to accept all the bids, throw the process out, and we can start again if that's your pleasure. That would be my preference. I don't know how the rest of the council feels about this. I think we have very many options, so okay. we either go with what we have here or we go out for proposals again. Okay. <clears throat> I think as part of your discussion in light of what I've here, and I'm, and I'm 
filtering it, um, does the council want to have more of a role than it had in this particular process in developing the criteria and scoring mechanisms? Because those are, are by their very nature subject, we've talked about this before, they're subjective. And, and staff does as good a job as it can uh, applying them evenly I, and faithfully, but it's the, always the council's prerogative to decide. I, yeah, I think staff is the one best equipped to, to make these decisions, particularly those departments that heavily use the services of a mechanic. Um, I just feel like if we're going to have a procurement process, we should follow through with that. I agree, Jeff, Jeff Cook is very capable absolutely capable never had an issue we just we just want all the criteria met and spelled out there and thank you city attorney and i hope my comment about my desire to keep our sales tax dollars in city limits is not um, seen as wanting to meddle in the actual criteria i completely think that staff especially those on selected on the committee who use the services and are able to provide um, the feedback um, are the more appropriate persons uh, to be serving on that. Mr. Mayor, Ms. Henry, that's that's council's prerogative and that's something council has expressed on other occasions in the in the past before you came on council and I, I think staff hears you. So, council Member Allhouse. Um, so I have a question. I'm a bit confused now. So, I mean, if we're not changing the criteria of how staff is grading, then I wouldn't think we'd want to go back out for a proposal, maybe just to have the scoring redone on these three proposals to include all categories? Is that what we're asking or? Well, we can counsel, it's really up to council um, how we want to handle this. So that's that's an option. Um, I think going out and rebidding it is another option. Um, and accepting. Why, why would we, I'm sorry. Why would we rebid it though if we're not changing the scoring criteria? Because, I mean, we didn't get a lot of participation. Why would we? take up that time to rebid it when, when we're allowing the staff to mm -hmm. use their knowledge and their ability and, and saying council doesn't want to get involved in, in how the scoring is done, so why would we re rebid it? it? I mean, bidding takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm, certainly. So I'm just, why would we rebid it if we're not changing how we're going to score? So it's, I think we either take it as is or we ask that these three bids be rescored. I, d I don't know if we lawfully can do that following procurement practices. I, I believe we have to actually start over um, through rejecting these. And um, that, you know, the more we discuss this, I'm leaning heavily toward that. I submitted proposals um, for, for some of our clients on behalf of my firm. And I would put down very different references. Um, you know, I try to put down the references that will answer their phones and say great things about me which is what we'd expect, but I would put down different references, possibly more uh, you know, sexy businesses or people who may never answer their phone, um, which I, th I think um, if I knew that that was what was being evaluated, who, you know, for some other criteria and not just the glowing reference. Um, so I don't think we can downplay the value of the consideration these businesses put before listing these references. And I think there's certainly a lot of information that the callers could glean from the references, you know, um, not just about a glowing recommendation, but, you know, the, the type of vehicles that they have the mechanic maintain. And, you know, there's certainly a lot of other information that you certainly. could. Certainly. And I, I didn't mean to sound like I was downplaying the references. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the references went slightly above and beyond what we asked for. Mm -hmm. We listed um, ears on the contract and the type of service and mm -hmm. fleet that they were maintaining in that yeah. instance. My concern is if we, if you don't mind, if, if we if we don't just reject all bids but instead choose to have the uh, committees rescore these three, then I think there would be businesses that would have some uh, heartburn out there in the public and in our community. So I think if we're going to, I think we should just reject my, my you know, what I would propose is that we direct, re reject all bids bid it again and make sure that we follow through with the procurement process that everybody signed on to. I have a question. Sure. Uh, what does this mean realistically as far as, um, I, it sounds as though we've been operating under a state of grace right now with the same contract rate as we expired March 1st. Are we going to see either a lapse of service or an interim period where our rates are 
you know, no, we will continue to operate under the same agreement that we've had and the same rates. Okay. Good. And not to throw a big wrinkle into the whole thing, but I, I also have had a longstanding concern about the duration of these contracts, that it's a potential for five years uh, for one vendor. And I, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about that, but I feel like, um, you know, it'd be nice to give more of our local businesses more of an opportunity to bid on these city projects because as, as a local business owner, um, I understand what a contract like this can do for your business. Um, and certainly I think it'd be nice to uh, share the services essentially that City of Cottonwood has out there to offer these local businesses. And I think if there is a way to look at um, an opportunity to, um, uh, you know, weight differently those that do operate within the city limits, I think that'd be helpful too. I understand that sometimes the time, the, the reason for the time is often because you invest in the city. The city has specific equipment, so you need specific tools, and you have to invest in those tools. And if you're going to have the account for one year, it's probably not monetarily advantageous for you to do that. But if you're going to have it for two or three years, then investing in that equipment obviously will pay itself mm -hmm. off through the contract. So I do understand that, that little bit lengthier contract. Yeah, and, and this isn't necessarily a conversation we have to have now, but Today. it's certainly okay. on, on my radar, and I'd like okay. the council to take a look at it at some point, the way we, the, the duration of these contracts that we okay. seek. So, council. We're going to make a motion that Please. we uh, reject all bids and go out for a rebid. I'll second that. All in favor? Oh, Deputy Clerk, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Althaus? I'm going to pass, which means you have to come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Norman? <laughs> yes. Councilmember Pfeiffer? Yes. Councilmember Allen? Yes. Councilmember Henry? Yes. Uh, Vice Mayor Howergy? Yes. Mayor Alinsky? Yes. And Councilmember Althaus? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Moving on, item two, special event liquor license applications submitted by Christian Oliva Del Rio, applicant for the Cottonwood Chamber of Commerce for chamber mixers scheduled for March 16, 2017 at 891 South Main Street, Randall's Restaurant, and April 20, 2017 at 197 South Willard Street, Haven of Cottonwood. Do I need to recuse myself. Okay, very good. A conflict. I just can't get my chair to move. <laughs> so, Council, this is pretty um, self-explanatory. Is there any discussion about this item? Not our first rodeo. I'm sorry? Not our first rodeo on this one. Would you like to make a motion? Absolutely. Uh, if I could get there from here, I'm going to go ahead and wing it. I move to approve the special liquor license application submitted by Christian Odiva Del Rio for the chamber mixer schedule for March 16th and April 20th, 2017. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? And before the vote, I would just like to say that I am a current uh, governing board member of the Chamber of Commerce. However, I don't see a conflict of interest by my reading um, of the statute, and I did consult with um, our city attorney, Mr. Horton, who also agrees that there, uh, it, this situation does not present a conflict of interest, but for appearance purposes, I did want the public to know um, that this analysis has been conducted. Very good. Thank you. And I ditto that, because <laughs> we burst over on the board. Right. Okay. Well, I appreciate you disclosing that. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion's approved. All right. Last item, uh, appointing a citizen at large and council representative to the <coughs> city's board and commission application review committee. So this is the committee that we talked about putting together. We have um, the deadline was March 1 for people to apply for the many boards and commissions that we have vacancies on. And in order to go ahead and appoint, uh, you know, review and appoint some of those uh, people that applied, we have to we have to start this committee. 
and uh, we did receive, I believe, one um, uh, application for the citizen at large, and then we need to appoint one council member to serve on this committee as well. So um, I'll open it up for the council to discuss this. I'm, I'm not, does anybody familiar with Joyce Oswald? Has any personal relationship with? I do not. I do not know her, but I do appreciate her uh, Absolutely. signing up. Absolutely. Uh, I, I thought she would be here so we could meet her. I just assumed we would meet somebody yeah. we were appointing to serve on a board. Well, that, that, would, that would be nice, but I don't believe she's here. And to be honest with you, I don't know if she was notified, so it's That's probably not by yeah. any fault of her own. She may not have been notified. Has a meeting uh, either day of the week or time been set, or this was an as-needed committee, wasn't that? It was an as-needed right? committee, mm -hmm. and, and really they don't ever need to meet as a group. They would, be, they would receive the applications uh, by email electronically, and then they would just score based off that matrix that we came up with, and then that would be tallied with the council's matrix that we uh, fill out during our public interview of those applicants. So they don't actually need to meet in person, which makes it much more mysterious. <laughs> they'll, they'll never know one another. <laughs> when they don't show up here, no, they won't. Do we have any, um, any um, applicants pending this review process? Mm -hmm. For other boards and commissions? Yeah, we have received um, applicants, I believe, for all of the commissions. And I don't know that we have a surplus of applicants for the amount of seats available, but, but yeah, we have. Because this would only be used if we had a surplus, is what we had discussed before. Yeah, I think, I think this committee would actually make sure that they are eligible to be appointed. But essentially, you're right, it would be kind of moot if there's two, two vacancies and one applicant. Right. I, I would, I mean, I'm fine moving forward. I would like to meet Ms. Oswald at, mm -hmm. at some point. If she could maybe come to the next working session or the next city council meeting, it would be nice to put a face, okay. you know, with, with somebody who's scoring and, and helping. That's just me personally. I like mm -hmm. to, you know, meet people and. Mm -hmm. No, I, I agree with you and I, uh, I, I don't know what happened there, but um, she's not here tonight. I mean, she was the only person that applied as a citizen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, well then I'll move to appoint Joyce Oswald to serve as the citizen at large representative to the board and commission application review committee. Second. Okay, so mayor made the motion, vice mayor, or excuse me, council member Piper seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes and now we need to appoint a council to serve on this board and commission application review committee. And as we discussed, that council member would then recuse him or herself during the public interview of the applicants. So who, who Everybody among jump up at the same time. I, want to, I would like to be part of the public um, interview okay. process, so. Okay. I'm trying to remember because it was also the public interview process and then the vote, and I'm, I'm hesitant to give up my vote. I think <laughs> I think that's what our issue is right now. Is we're all hesitant to give up our vote. Okay. Um, what, however, you do have a piece of the vote because you're scoring the matrixes, so that's basically your vote. But I think we're all hesitant. If I could remind the council, it was supposed to be a rotating slot. Thank you for that. Reminder. I don't remember that. Are we supposed to call references? <laughs> <laughs> Was that supposed to be decided tonight? Is that on the agenda? <laughs> okay. Okay. And it'll revolve, so next year we'll come back around. And you know, Council, we're we're trying this process out. Mm -hmm. This may not work, and we right. might try to look at a different process in the future. We're trying to breathe life into these. You know, trying Embers. to get folks to sign up and, you know. Can I make a motion before she changes her mind? <laughs> <laughs> Please. I make a motion that we appoint Council Member Norman as a council representative on this commission. Second. 
Okay, so <laughs> you're surrounded. Council, Council Member Pfeiffer made the motion, and <laughs> Council Member Aldhouse seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I move we pay the claims and adjustments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I move we adjourn. <laughs> Aye. Second. Okay, so that We're was getting a little giggly over here. All in favor? Aye. 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 That was Norman and Piper second. Okay, got that. Thank you. Thanks, Council. <laughs> Thank you. Good. You're welcome.